welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing how I make these really cool, realistic peacock feathers. They're completely edible. There are no wires in them, so they can be placed uh, on a cake, no problem, or you can make a topper with them. What I'm using is Icing Images brand Smart Sheets. These are edible printable sheets that I use with my edible printing system. There's a smooth side and a rough side. I print it on the smooth side and I found this image just online. And so we're gonna do this double-sided so that you have the, the feather effect on both sides. So what you have to do is you print a sheet of the images in one direction and then you flip the image. I used Canva just to flip the image so that you have opposite so you can sandwich them together if that makes sense. So I've printed on the smooth side and flipped the image so I have two sheets and I have one here that I've already pre-cut. So you're going to need some sharp scissors I'm just using some piping gel, which I make. I can share the recipe for that later. You're gonna need some petal dust. I've got royal blue and lilac, and then I'm just using a clean, dry brush for that. So step one is obviously print out your images and get those ready to go, and then cut them roughly together. And then I'm just gonna take a brush with my piping gel, and I'm gonna brush the entire surface of the back of one of these edible images on the smart sheet. So again, I printed the image on the smooth side. So this is the rough side that I'm coating with the piping gel. And this is just to act as an edible glue to sandwich these two pieces together. And so that's ready to go. So I just take my other half and line it up and then I'm just gonna press it gently together until it adheres and you just kind of have to keep pinching it and sometimes I notice that I maybe I missed a spot so I might have to kind of open it with my fingers a little bit like that didn't glue down so go ahead and add a little more piping gel. You don't want to use too much piping gel. Um, although smart sheets are a little different than wafer paper or icing sheets, they're kind of in between. They're more sturdy than wafer paper, but they're not as stiff as some of the premium icing sheets. So I really like them for that reason, but it is definitely thicker than a wafer paper, but it holds up to moisture a little bit better. And so I feel like it's a little more forgiving in that regard. So uh, I've just, you'll see that it kind of softened up a little bit with the piping gel, but it is going to uh, dry kind of hard. So the one that I've already made uh, dried pretty stiff. So once they're sandwiched together, you're just gonna start trimming with your scissors. These are very sharp, nice scissors. You want to make sure you have a really nice scissor so that you can have a really clean cut. And basically I'm just kind of randomly starting to cut in to try to get rid of some of the white space in the feathers. And it takes a little bit of time so I sped up the the filming a little bit so you don't have to watch me cut but you're just snipping little bits at a time to get that white space out of there and continue 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 cutting cut 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 snip 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 get all those little pieces out and then once you're happy with um, what you've trimmed out you can just kind of see how it's feeling and looking and you'll notice as I'm trimming it out I'm exposing some of the white underside of the um, you know the images that are sandwiched together um, which is fine because our final step is going to be to fill in 
the colors with our petal dust so that you won't see those white spaces. You can't trim too much off or it won't hold its shape. So that's why I just choose to fill in with some color. So, and you'll see I'm just kind of fluffing it with my fingers. And once I've been happy with how much I've trimmed off, then I'm just going to take a little sheet of wax paper and my royal blue petal dust. And also I've got my lilac petal dust. Now the one that I've finished off camera, I did add a little darker petal dust to it. But for this one, I just wanted to see what it would look like if I only did the blue and the violet, or the lilac rather. I do have some, a little bit of black mixed into the, the one that's already finished. So it's, it's darker, you'll see, and you'll see that at the end of the tutorial here. But I actually like having each one maybe be just a little different. I mean, it's okay. They don't have to be exactly the same, but basically just taking a clean, dry, semi-stiff brush, and I'm just working the petal dust into those areas that are white to cover that up. And so I'm just starting with the blue. I'm filling in kind of at the base of the feather. And then you'll see I'm flipping it over because most likely, well actually the project I'm going to use these for, um, you'll, you'll be able to see both sides of the feather. So I want to make sure to, that both sides are, you know, have that finished look. So just kind of dipping the, the dry brush into the petal dust and then I'm going to add my purple, kind of start working that in. And you know, I'm just really, I thought I'd do the blue at the base and the purple maybe a little more on the edges of the feathers. So I just keep dusting and you can just keep building up colors, mixing colors as you go. And then as you add layers of colors with the dust, um, I'll just kind of keep, keep remixing, keep brushing on, I'm really just doing it until I'm visually happy with it. And then you'll see I do flip it, you know, front to back uh, every so often to make sure I get both sides covered with the petal dust. And once I'm happy with the color, um, I'm going to take those scissors again and just kind of snip a little bit more here and there. It's really just kind of a process of snipping to separate those realistic looking feathers. And then as I snip, I gotta add a little more color to kind of cover those edges where there's some white showing from the smart sheet. So I'm just literally just dusting and snipping, dusting and snipping. And then you'll also see, um, I occasionally will uh, pick it up and kind of fluff it a little bit with my fingers. Um, and you'll see that toward the end too. But again, I'm just kind of alternating between cleaning it up, uh, getting some of those feathers loosened, and then adding more dust, adding more dust. And it's just, um, you know, you can just have fun with it. I thought too it would be nice if I had a teal colored powder that that would be fun to kind of add because I know peacock feathers have, you know, some teal in them. But I didn't have any. So I just went with the purple and the blue, which is fine. Um, but here I am just kind of uh, dusting more and turning it in my hands and fluffing it up. Now when it's completed and dry, um, you can attach this to a cake using, I like to actually use melted candy melts to attach them. and. I think I'm pretty happy with both of those. And so I have a couple. And as I said, you can see that one that I did off camera is a little darker. I actually like it a little better. I might go in and finish off the other. But that's it, guys. That's how you make a realistic edible peacock feather.